By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And we have three beautiful envelopes. Um, I think I'm going to start with this one. Yeah, let me start with this one. This one is kind of like a little unknown to me, so I'm just going to start with this one. Rip it open. Bam, oh, this is not unknown. This is from Edo, I believe. Edo is a really nice guy. Um, a very, um, what, what do I actually want to say? Look at this, we got another one here. Edo, Edo has a beautiful collection. That's what I'm trying to say. He really appreciates signed cards, altered cards. He just has a really, really cool collection. And every once in a while, he sells a little bit um, why I don't know, maybe to make space, maybe because he found another edition. I know that he has been working on getting more blackboarded cards, so perhaps that's why he decided to part from this beautiful channel. Look at this, really nice condition. That art, amazing. Too green to cast. Sorcery, what I really like is this dark print version. Some unlimited cards have that, that they're just printed really dark. And then those colors, that red really pops out. And uh, for people that don't know what it actually does, if we can read it, let's just get it out of the sleeve because there's a lot of glare on it. Wow, what a beautiful, what a beautiful condition. And it's actually not that expensive. And it's, it's such, it can be such a powerful card. Two green to cast sorcery. Um, and it reads, until end of turn. Wow, this is hard to read. You may add colorless, oh yeah, you may add, wait, sorry here, you may add colorless mana to your mana pool uh, at the cost of one life each. These additional, oh, these additions are played with the speed of an interrupt. Effects, I'm kind of reading through the camera, that's why it's not really working that well. Effects that prevent damage may not be used to counter this loss of life. Okay, well, if you could follow that, I mean, well done, fantastic. Um, so basically, you cast it and you can say, I want to have 19 colorless mana and then you pay 19 life. Of course, we all know the combo channel fireball where you're on 20 life, your opponent is maybe on 18 life and you can play channel fireball. You channel yourself for 18 life, so you get 18 mana, and then you can play your Fireball for 18 or whatever number, as long as you have more life than your opponent, and then you can do a channel Fireball and win the game. This is something that actually still happens in old school. People still play channel and Fireball together in decks, and why wouldn't you? Because it can just lead to a victory out of nowhere. Now, remember, this is restricted in old school, which I think is a good thing, and... We have beautiful channel and we have two really nice legends cards. Jasmine Boreal, five mana. It's a vanilla four five. Really, really nice art. Let me just take this out of the sleeve as well. Really nice condition, beautiful card. This Edo has just cards, beautiful cards in a fantastic condition. Look at it. Stunning. And this is from Richard King Ferguson. I should have known just by looking at the art, I should have known. And we have another one also in near mint. You can see that here, he's written it down on the sleeve, not on the card, luckily. It's just on the sleeve, don't worry. And this is Casimir Lone Wolf. One white, one blue, and four. That's such <laughs> so cool art to see this at the back. Also a vanilla, and this is a 5-3 creature for six. Which I know it's not the best. I mean, you get a Juggernaut for four, which is a 5-3. But, I mean, it's just beautiful art. Really a badass. Also by Richard Kane Ferguson. Just love these, these legend cards. They have so much character and personality. So this is the mail from Edo. Thank you very much, Edo, for that mail. Um, let's take a look. Let's, let's open up this one. Wow, this is really well-packed. 
I'm gonna do it partly partly off camera, I guess. Well, I can do it on, but I don't wanna show the back of the envelope because it's got a lot of information there. As in addresses of the seller. Here we go. Now it's working. I'm gonna open it up. Here we go. Ooh. What I like, it's nice and sturdy. It's well protected. I think there are top loaders in here, which is a good thing. Let's get the scissors going here. Get rid of the cellar tape. There we go. Hmm. Is this a letter or... Okay, I'm just think this is just a random piece of paper. Let me just have a look. So having to do this off camera for a second because I don't want to show any... Whoop, there's one. I don't want to show any addresses or anything of the seller. So, um... Two carts in top loader, then you kind of know what time it is. It does mean that they're, I wouldn't say super expensive, but they're expensive enough to put in a top loader, which is almost every old school card, in my opinion, deserves a top loader. But I do get it when you're selling all the time, you cannot put everything in a top loader, can you? Maybe it's not worth it. Let me just get rid of all the seller tape on these. Because I also love to reuse the top loaders. Here we go. Okay, so we've got two cards. And let's see. Oh, yeah. Boom. Taking it out. Taking this one out as well. So what, what's what been your most recent magic purchase? Let me know in the comments below. Are you also like a hoarder like me or... Oh, really? Kind of hard to open this one. Interesting. The other one went really, really well. And this one, it seems it's not really cooperating. Okay, there we go. Finally. So sorry that I'm doing a lot off camera here, but it's this pack is a little bit difficult, it seems. The second one, and just going to... Take it out of the sleeve. Look at the condition here. Definitely not as good as, as the condition of the cards of Edo. But hey, I don't really mind. Um, this is a really cool card. And here you can see it. It's a Preacher. This is actually my third Preacher. I just think these cards are really cool. And they're they're slowly they're slowly cre creeping up. You know, I'm not a finance guy or anything. But I felt, okay, if I want to if I wanna get them, I might as well get them now. Because they've been creeping up for a long time. And I just think it's a very playable card. And this is actually also a Preacher here. So for people that don't know, it's it's two white and one to cast. It's a Summon Creature, Summon Preacher, a 1-1 one, one from the dark. And you can tap it to gain control of one of the opponent's creatures. And the opponent chooses which target creature you control. If Preacher becomes untapped, you lose control of this creature. You may choose not to untap Preacher as normal during your untap phase. So just like Sea Singer, you can keep it tapped. Uh, to keep possession of the creature and um, then it says you also lose control of the creature if preacher leaves play or at the end of the game right so you do have to give it back you cannot keep it unfortunately that would be really sweet um so yeah so if it gets killed you got to give the creature back makes sense right so we've got these two here and we have a last one this is from Mirlo, so then people people from the Netherlands probably know who send this to me when they see Mirlo. It's a small little village in the deep south of the Netherlands, close to the Belgium border. And um, let me just check here. I don't want to spoil anything. And that means it's from Roby, a really, really great seller from the Netherlands. I actually buy a lot of stuff from him. Um, and yeah, these two cards are just, are, are just there as set. Like it's a... Uh, I've got a plan with this. So here we go. 
There we are. He's even got his own. Oh, look at this. Fancy schmancy. He's got his own little card in everything. So if you're looking for him on card market, Robbie, number one. And, uh, well, this is, of course, Farmstead. The art of Farmstead, not the card. And, yeah, that's his business card, I guess. So I'm just going to flip it around. Okay, so we've got, yeah, 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 these are two cards. Actually, thank you, Toby. You just put this in there because... I, I, well, I asked him, he said, you know, I'll, I'll add them for free, so thank you for that. The Water Worm, one Baluti cast, it gets plus O plus one if opponent controls at least an island, so then you've got a one, two. Pretty useless, but as some of you know who are following the channel, I, you know, I'm organizing this, the Dark Tournament, so I think maybe it can come in handy. And there's another the Dark Worm, and then we got one of the cards that I was actually talking about earlier. Yes! Ah, demonic hordes. That's so cool to own a demonic hordes. Wow, 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 wow. Look at it. That art is just kick ass. It's such a cool card. So it's an unlimited one. Uh, three black and three to cast for a summon demon. And it is a 5-5, five five, so it's huge. And what you can do is you can tap it to destroy one land. But you have to pay three black during your upkeep or the hordes become tapped and you lose a land of the opponent's choice. So you really have to make sure that you can pay that upkeep cost or have some kind of crazy deck where you want to destroy your own lands. I don't know, maybe to activate land tax or something? I'm not sure if you have to pay three. I think it's an option. So what can also happen is you decide not to pay, it taps, destroy something, and then maybe activate your land tax. Does anybody do that? I mean, I guess not, but is there any other reason why you would want to destroy your own land? Anyway, it's a really cool card, and I actually want to play it in combination with this card that's that's here. So it is the Dingus Egg. So Dingus Egg is four to cast, and it reads, whenever anyone loses a land, egg does two damage to that player for each land lost. So this is pretty cool. So the scenario that I'm going for is have a Dingus Egg in play, obviously play with um, land destruction spells, you know, that's obvious, so that my opponent is behind on tempo and then to make matters worse, in turn, I don't know, four, hopefully, I can cast my Demonic Hordes and I can just wreck the rest of his board and kill him by with the Dingus Egg. And this is actually a second... Dingus Egg. So that is the combo. And I think it's really nice to kind of close the mill day off with this image here. The three demonic horde, or the two demonic, sorry, the one demonic hordes, <clears throat> I apologize, and the two Dingus Eggs together here on the screen. Thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. Let me know what you think of this little combo here and how you would use Dingus Egg or Demonic Hordes in a deck. Or if you use it in a deck, I would love to hear some tips and pointers. Um, if you want to support the channel, you're actually already doing that by watching this video. Also, I appreciate it if you don't use an ad blocker. That's, um, that's really helpful uh, to at least generate a little bit of income from these, uh, these movies. Talking about that, you can also sponsor the show, and you can do that by becoming a patron on Patreon. There's probably a card popping up right now. We've got our own little Discord. We organize our own events. There's just more and more happening every day. So check it out on Patreon and see if it's something for you. Maybe it is. Talking about our patrons. This card is just so cool. Talking about our patrons. Um, let's go to the end scroll, and let's take a look at our fantastic, amazing patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks.
Ik het als fik het als zomba kan zien.